And after having a few hundred wives, he still wasn't satisfied and went and got a few hundred concubines. And then, after having all of these wives, all of these concubines, he saw another one. Top, taking a bath. She was minding her own business. She wasn't trying to tempt nobody. Her husband was on the battlefield, fighting in the war. She was minding her own business. And David looked out the wrong window. You know the. And that book will want to tempt you, you know. He, he, he makes you look where you ought not to look. Calls you to see things you ought not to see. Praise the Lord. But he should have had sense enough after he saw what he saw, look the other way. Go on back in the house. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But no, he had to just look at her. Hallelujah. And he started lusting. And then he called his servant and said, Go see who is that woman over there on the rooftop. So he went over there and came back and said, That's uh, the Hittite woman, Uriah's wife. Oh, isn't he on the battlefield? Yes. Good. <laughs> so, sent for her. No one refuses the king's request, you know. Sent for her and she got dressed and came on over. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. And he had a dialogue with her told her that he loved her. Now, I'm sure he was lying. <laughs> sure about that. You can't look at a woman and fall in love with a left ass. It's what he saw. Praise the Lord. Then they had a relationship. And he realized that this is another man's wife. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. You can't have another man's wife. So he said, well, I'm going to have to do something to cover myself. Sent for a husband to come. And of course, he was in the king's army. He came expeditiously. And he said, go home to your wife. Spend a night. Relax. You've been fighting on the battlefield. This was to cover He went home and instead of going in the house, he sat on the doorstep all night. Somebody told David, said, you know what? So he didn't even go in the house. Sat on the doorstep all night. David said, my God, my sins are not covered then. Tell what you do, send him to the front line in battle. And see if we can get him killed. See so when sin gets through with you, you know, makes a mess out of your life. You can't play with sin, it'll hurt you. It's short. It's strong. 
Had the man killed, news came back to David, he's dead. David said, thank God. The Lord said, don't thank me because I'm going to get you, buddy. I'm going to get you. You have caused the man's death. You have committed adultery. You have defiled yourself. You have defiled the kingdom. This is the situation that David was in when he wrote the 51st Psalm. This is the situation he was in. God chastised him. He uncovered it because David never planned to confess. But God uncovered him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And when God uncovered him and made him confess, it was a false confession. It was a false confession. David didn't confess the way he should. He forgot that God has eyes. Some folks seem to think God is blind. I wear dark glasses. God can see. And He can see everything. You can't hide nothing from God. Hiding from her, hiding from Him, hiding from them. God looking at you. Praise your Lord. Sees everything you do and writing it in a book. Hallelujah. You better be glad God got a eraser, honey. Oh, you better be glad. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. You better be glad God has an eraser. Hallelujah. Because under the law, he didn't have no eraser. When you did, when you committed certain sin, you had to be killed. There was no eraser. And here comes Jesus Christ in grace. Hallelujah. With an eraser. Oh Lord, I praise you. Because he knew men will sin. Men will sin. They will backslide. Even though I'm bringing in grace, I'm getting rid of law. I'm bringing in grace. If I don't get an eraser, grace isn't going to do man any good. He's still a victim of sin. So he brought an eraser to erase our past. To get rid of our past. So you can have a new future. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And Jesus Christ brought this eraser with him to erase our sins, blot out our transgressions. This is what David said. He said, blot out my transgression. Blot them out. Get rid of them. But they couldn't be blotted out. They couldn't be. My sins are forever before me. They cannot be blotted out. They are there. They are there. I'm glad I didn't live on the law. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When you live in under grace, and if it wasn't for the eraser that the Lord has, you wouldn't be sitting here. Okay. Oh, hallelujah. 
life of Jesus, you would be sitting here. You'd still be in your sins. Still be in your sins. But because Jesus brought an eraser, hallelujah, when he got ready to save you, the devil threw everything at you that he had. Brought up your past. Told you you're not fit to be saved. Told you you can't be saved. Look what you are. Look what you've been doing. You can't be saved. Jesus walked up there and said, you want to be saved? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Did you say, yes, Lord? Save me, save me. Jesus Christ told the erasing angel, said, bring the eraser. Bring the eraser. Get rid of my sins. Bring the eraser. Bring my blood. 